everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Jason yep. Levine, the gaming machine. What was that a Yelp? Yep. There? Oh, a yeah. Yeah. Yep. We're all, all right. here. Well, Episode we are... f -f 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 50. That's right, 50 episodes. And our celebration is basically coming up a little bit later in the game show of sorts. Um, Do we get cake? You may actually have cake. There's cake in the fridge. Is there really? Go ahead, go to the next yeah, thing. you weren't prepared for go that. To the next thing. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, that's true. Well, speaking of the next thing, let's go to the news. We're just gonna get right started, right in, folks. All right, there is not a ton Wait, of what news. Happened? There's not a ton of news. <laughs> I should have been back with some cake. Dang it. It was not long enough. So we're just going to go through the news because there just isn't a ton of it going on right now. I'm sure we'll hear more and more news as time goes by. A lot of stuff is happening on Kickstarter. But first of all, we have Fort. This is from Leader Games, who is in the category subcategory of companies that puts four-letter words as their names, mm -hmm. as Next Move also is doing. Mm-hmm. How much you want to bet that within a year there'll be a company that does only five letter? I we already think have. Uh, I know that the Paco Games line of games. Those are three letters. Were three. three letters, yeah. <laughs> but five's <laughs> even bigger than four. So, <laughs> so anyway, this is a deck builder uh, for two to four players, twenty to forty minutes. It's he says this is a re-implementation re of Grant Rodiak's SPQF which is a heavier game, if I'm recalling correctly. I had never played that SPQF. In this one, you're a kid, and you want to have the coolest fort. So you're going to just... Your cards will let you take actions in your own turn, but you can follow other people's actions on their turns. It looks like deck building with a serious twist. Um, it's The fact that it's 20 to 40 minutes means it's pretty quick. It's easily their lightest game. I mean, they've done Vast and Root, and they're coming up with Oath. So this fort one is this one is also not going to Kickstarter as far as I can tell. So this is not a light game, is what you're saying, right? I mean, it seems like it's a I don't know. It looks light. Yeah, I mean, is it asymmetrical? Have they said like everything mm, else they do? No, but a deck builder by very nature is asymmetrical after the very first turn. Well, unless you copy the person. Have you ever done that in Dominion? By the oh man, I don't think you could though, because the decks will reshuffle. Oh. But oftentimes you get the same thing. Like uh, you get the four three gold four, and three gold, or, and then if someone does it, I'll be like, I'll buy the same thing, and that would be weird. Let's let's move on. Okay, yeah. uh, Friday the thirteenth. <laughs> Jason Voorhees is back. Who? Uh, this is from the Op uh, or USAopoly, and this is a game for three to six players. It's age seventeen and up. Which, again, I'm so confused as to why these games are rated R. Most of these games I've seen that are rated like this aren't more that's, than PG-13. The theme is about murder, so I guess maybe that's enough. Maybe they just want to be in the clear with that. Sure, sure. Yeah. It's a pressure luck horror game. You will be camp counselors. <laughs> the nerd, the partier, the nice guy, the final girl, the diva, and the jock. Wouldn't we all want to be the final girl? She's the only one who survived the movie. I don't know. You need to survive five nights with Fred, I mean, with Jason. Wow. Um, you just need to grab stuff. Oh, you're pulling stuff from a bag. Oh, man, I want to play this with Sam. <laughs> so, so basically, this is like Five Nights with Jason here. You have to survive I guess, with me. yeah. Oh, I hate Five Nights with Freddy. All right. More games are coming to the Switch. Mystic Veil vale is coming to the Switch. Actually, Ooh. is it out yet? I think it's on the Switch now. Yes. What's coming to the Switch is Wingspan. So, ooh, that's yeah. Cool. That's the, cool. the thing about this, I was talking to Eric and Crystal last night. I don't know that I would want to play a game on the Switch opposed to the iPad. Mm -hmm. I like the bigger screen of the iPad. Also, the iPad's touch screen is amazing. The sure, right. thing. All right. In sad news, UK Games Expo has been delayed. They moved it to August. Um, so if you're not keeping track of dates, it's August uh, 21st to 23rd. That does not conflict with Gen Con. Gen Con is at the end of July this year, maybe. Um, and they're giving a full refund to people who can't attend because they changed it, or if, whether you're an exhibitor or a, a attendee. Origins has also announced that they will be making a decision about their convention by May 1st. 
Uh, let's see. Aliens. A cooperative strategy survival game from Gale Force 9. Now, if there's mm. one company you want to make a game about an IP, Gale Force 9 is definitely on that list. They've made I some agree. very highly lauded games, and mm -hmm. we have yet to have an Aliens game where you are fighting the aliens. Yeah. What do you mean? No, Aliens Legendary, you are sneaking through. No, I mean Aliens from Leading Edge. Oh, that's true. So let me rephrase that. We've had a game that people would want to play. You're talking about a game with nasty little counters. You can look it up online. It looks gross. I'll never play it, Kabuki Kid. Um, <laughs> ever! <laughs> anyway, this, you're the iconic characters from the movie, and you're fighting through a gauntlet of aliens. It's a cooperative survival game. Maybe this, is a, maybe this is a re -theme of... You're going of to look for survivors and then fight off ambushes. It sounds like a re-theme of the one from 1986. I... Doubt it. They did just redo Dune, which also came out in the 80s. The Gale Force 9? Do, uh, maybe I've been tricked. Maybe what you've was been the one tricked. from the 1980s? Leading Edge did it. It was, it was basically a, a dungeon crawl style game where you're, the characters and the aliens are coming out of you dungeon crawl style, and you have to kill them before they spill acid all over you and kill you. Is yes. it cooperative? Yeah. It's a co-op. It was a co-op. Was it co-op? It was co-op, and you're, all, you're the did Marines. Did someone play you the no. Oh, okay. Well, it sounds cool. I like this movie a lot, and it, like you said, this IP is neat, and I, I would like it. I mean, I think I'll enjoy it unless it's too convoluted, but I dig the, the idea. I'm, I'm there, man. I'm excited. My theme of choice. Yes. SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> From the op, more stuff. Trivial Pursuit SpongeBob SquarePants, which I don't think I would play that one. 600 questions. <laughs> I, I think is I know nothing. Plankton, does that say Plankton Rising as in Thanos Rising and, and yes. uh, the other Rising? Like Star Wars Rising. Is that is that really what that is? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> so there's another Rising game in the series. There was, first we had Thanos Rising, then we had uh, Dark... Eaters Rising, or what was that called? Death Eaters. Death Eaters Rising, right. and then... So, Harry... Marvel, like, I mean, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm. Harry Potter, Star Wars, SpongeBob, SpongeBob SquarePants. The fate of Krusty You know what, though? I think my kids would like this one. I'm, I'm planning to get this one to play with them. Oh, the op. All right. Quest... Quests your so from what I this is actually not board game news is RPG news but I thought it was interesting enough from oh, what I understand this is awesome this is the game that they played in the latest Pixar movie yeah. which I heard was really good it was amazing and I suspect it will be on Disney Plus within a month <laughs> just because um, everything that's going week. on Quests of your because you want to get the Phoenix Stones yes Jason none of us else have seen the movie but I heard it's good <laughs> it's really good so they're making an actual role playing game about it all right cute. Fairy Tale Inn. This is from Come On, and the reason I mention this one is because they don't often make non-Kickstarter games these right. days. They used right. to make more. This one looks Ooh. like Connect, Connect Four. Four. Connect Four. Sweet. Um, there's you're trying to take care of guests in an inn, and you need to make sure you put people. You're not supposed to put like Little Red Riding Hood and Big Bad Wolf in adjoining rooms. So Connect Four. Got Ooh, it. is um, what's the name of that company who made a? Who's the Fairy Tale company? Oh, Sky. Sky. Yeah, Skybound's gonna come in like, this is our intellectual property! <laughs> this looks like a Skybound thing, doesn't it, in a sense? Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, it's, uh, I guess you're just dropping them in and trying to make different things line up. So, so it's like Connect, connect four. 4 with strategy. Actually, the concept sounds interesting to me because it's like a tile placement game, except that you have to drop them in. Like Connect 4? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Hey, finally. Now we're talking. Jurassic yes. Park is out for Unmatched. So simultaneous release is almost. Yes. Jurassic Park just came out for Fungoverse, but this one here has actual cool-looking dinosaurs. The raptors. This is the raptors and an engine, which basically has the guy with the rifle who is yeah. easily my favorite character from that movie. Ooh, yeah. Dun, the, dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. That, oh wait, no, that's. Does, does InGen also have Nedry? Jones. You are Robert Muldoon and his team of InGen security Robert guards. Robert Muldoon, certainly. He was the guy with the gun. And they're called the Clever Girls. <laughs> that's pretty. Good. All right. Now he was the only person in that movie who seemed to like take it seriously. <laughs> well, yeah. Everyone else was like, oh, dinosaurs. He, and then he got taken <laughs> out. Yeah. If he had, if he had not been taken out, they would have survived that movie faster. I don't know. 
Did we just spoil a movie from 1995? Oh, they did sorry. Spoiler alert! Oh, that was Indiana Jones theme. You. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> all, right, all right, let's go. Let's go to war game news. Come on, folks. You know what I like about Word Forge games? Everything. I like the way they box their games. I like the art design, especially the war games that I'm into. They're light war games, so you guys should give this a try, especially D-Day Dice. And they don't just have war games, but let's not talk about that now. Let's get into D-Day Dice. So let me put everything into perspective. From England, you're coming on a boat to hit the beaches of Normandy. Remember that, you're coming on a boat. So before you hit the core game of D-Day Dice, do or die is their motto, you gotta go way to hell. So you get off the big boats, of which there was 5,500, and you get on these little boats. And your main mission is to survive and land. And this is where you land. This number on the boat means that every single turn you lose one man. Now, if you go here, that means you lose an extra man. Plus, if you roll four, seven, or ten, you lose that many more men. Uh, what chance do you stand? The same chance they stood. <laughs> Here's your D-Day dice map. Start with four men. But in way to hell, you start with the maximum amount of men. And if you can have at least four men while you land, you're lucky. Now you're in hell for one year, because that's how long it took them to liberate Europe after it was occupied for five years. Think about that. Europe, seven years ago, was occupied by the Germans for five years. A white box means you can stay there three turns. The three means you lose three men every single turn. Now, if you move right, you gain something, but black box means you can only stay there one turn, plus you lose six men. So if you want to keep going right, well, do you have a mine detector? Because there's mines there. No, you don't. So you go center. Center, you gain something. And also, you can stay there three turns, but you lose four men. What's this? A machine gun roll. So you roll every turn, and you lose that many more men, plus the four men every single turn. So whether you go left or right, you lose something. Left, you lose the mine detector. Plus, you lose a special item. There's a machine gun, and every turn, you lose ten men. Now that you cross over into the bunker, you got to roll for mines. There's a machine gun. Every turn, you lose 15 men. So now you got to make that a bunker. Every turn, you lose 20 men. There's a machine gun. And if you're left with one man, you win the game. Pa, oh, I'm exhausted. I want to be my new girlfriend. <laughs> one, she's not your girlfriend. Two, she has a cat. Three, shut up. She plays Euros. <laughs> you want to play a Euro? We'll play a Euro. Really? Which one? <laughs> this one. So this game is resource management and card assisted game. This all helps you. It's not die, die, die all the time, though you will. So remember I said if you're left with one soldier to win the game? Well, yes, but not really, because there's an expansion for that. It's called Inside the Bunker. So you get extra cards to fight inside the bunker. The bunker expands, and you use that with another expansion called Airborne in Your Pocket. Okay, so you know what? Next week we're gonna talk about Airborne in Your Pocket with the Bunker Expansion. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week. <laughs> Showdown! Showdown. Alright, today's Dice Tower Showdown has to do with the Dice Tower. We're gonna be a little bit self-referential today, mm, but that's okay. Twelve, I'm writing it there. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. So we're going to ask a couple questions, and yes. you can write 12 for the first one if you want. Mm. Um, and they have numerical answers, and I'm going to give points to first and second place. Third place gets nothing. Two, the closest without going over. One, the second closest without going over. If you go over, you get nothing. Price nothing. Is right style? I What's love a wager it. style, but yes. <laughs> okay. Very simple game here. Here All we right. go. All Seven right. questions. Oof. Trying to be simple today. All right. Right now, and this is as of an hour ago, I guess, how many views does the Dice Tower channel have in total? I'll give you a clue. A couple years ago, I got the 100,000 view button. It's on the wall in my office. Wait, wow. are you talking subscribers? Or are you no, talking I'm views? not talking subscribers. I'm talking total views. All our videos added together. And you got to 100,000 a couple years ago? Yeah, actually, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna change the rules on the fly here. If you're the closest to without going over, you get three points. Okay. If you're the closest to but you went over, you get two points. Okay. And then second place gets one point, no matter what direction it is. Mm. I like it. This is tricky. This is really tricky. What but is with this? Do you need a new marker? Are we only doing the? We're doing one at a time, so big numbers, or am I? Are we doing all the numbers together and then? Oh no, no, we're gonna do one at a time. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, then let me write this much bigger. Shh. 
Sean says he always cheers for Z during these things. Okay. That's a mistake. I'm ready. My friend. I'm ready and in. I don't know. All right, Mike, what'd you say? 126,000. So you think. <laughs> You said 100,000 a couple years ago. Yeah, that was a couple years ago. That was subscribers. You're right. That had nothing to do with yeah. it. Yeah. Wait. Would you like to change your answer? Yes, because it should be much higher than this. Yeah, we actually get 100,000 views a day. That's what I'm saying. I was About. like very, very confused. Like what are we looking answer? at? Man, I, I shouldn't even mention that button. Yeah. I messed everyone over. Sorry. What? Yeah. Why don't I? Views. Right. I this is for views. So we get Total around. views. We've been getting around 100,000 a day. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Why, why is it shushing me? Because I had a good answer. Wait, so keep it, Mike, Dorcas. Mike, very humble. But now I need yes. to change it. Okay, here, right, here we go. Huh? Give me give me a second. Yeah, Mike, Mike put that in the views we you know got what? I'm on gonna, our best day. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make it very similar. I'm sorry. So yeah. I was at 126,000. Now I'm saying 126 million. 126 million. All right. Jason. Well, I originally had one 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 one. You still can. Million. Now I, because I knew everyone else would be over a million, over a hundred million. I went for two 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 two, two hundred and twenty two million. Because I know we get about fifty million a year, and it's been at least four or five years we've gotten that. We don't get fifty million a year. We do right. get about fifty million no, a year. I'm, I'm, if there's one person at this table <laughs> that would know this. who hundred percent knows the numbers. Well, you we can get, ask me almost any we point. Get 40 and I know my million numbers. a year times six years. I just said we get around a hundred thousand a day. That's multiply three, that's three that million a month. That's almost forty million a year. You keep rounding I can't do math. First, Still do I, I calculated point? it out over Z seven right years. Now is changing his answer. I'm just making a doodle. Oh, okay. All right, what did you have? I had 11 millions of <laughs> reindeers. I don't know why. All right, the answer is 203,992,133. No! So Mike gets three and Jason gets two. What do I get? I went over. <laughs> I will give over. you a half a point for your doodle. Yes. He just changed the rules. Oh, then I didn't go over. You See, did I go told over. you we were over 200 million. You know, you did go over. But you still gave. Yes, you. but we don't get 50 million a year. Also, the Dice Tower has been the channel has been in existence for over 10 years. I know. Which would then make that 500 million if that was the case. No, but a few years ago we were only getting 100,000 views. We, we have never got 50 million. I a feel year. like this All bear right. right now is all I'm saying. I feel like that bear. All right. Last week, a board game breakfast live oh. <laughs> had Jeremy on it. How long in minutes and seconds was the last episode? Okay, these six in hours. Minutes and seconds. six hours. <laughs> this was the. the, the He's the, like, I have two numbers: one for how long it was, and one for how long it. This fell. was the board game oh, breakfast oh, oh, episode. Oh, 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 oh. Not That's board, correct. Not the top ten. It, it shows here yeah, we're playing ten for ten. Oh, okay. board game breakfast I just, episode. I, I took a screenshot of the episode itself. I might need a new marker, actually. Can I borrow one of yours when you guys are done? Or Yeah, there might be one in there, too. Watch out with that drink. Watch out with that drink. Watch out with that drink. All right. I'm more worried about the computer, not the drink. All right. Although the drink spilled. That's what I'm talking about. Then it would be the... I'll put it down. Okay. And the fact of the matter is, like, year one for views... I think it was a total, it was less than 100,000 for the first year. Mm. That's how that works. We're moving on up. All right, I, I got it. All right, Jason, you're first. What do you got? Well, my first answer was not as long as this one will be, but then I guessed for a real answer was one hour, 32 minutes, and eight seconds. So 92 minutes and eight seconds, yes. And it better not be that long today. Yeah. <laughs> I said 44 minutes and some seconds, 12, I believe. 74 minutes, 42 seconds. And the answer is 67 oh. minutes and 15 seconds, giving Z three points, because you're the closest without going over. Yeah. Okay. And then Mike gets two. All right. Well, one of the things that we do here in the Dice Tower is we review board games. So, on Board Game Geek, right now, or as of last night when I did this, how many entries are there? This includes everything, the expansions, uh, oh, a promo man. pack. Man. It was Wait, interesting because I went to the entry of like just how many entries exist on board. Yeah, I, I originally I was gonna say how many games, but some of them are expansions, some are promo packs and stuff. Oh, I'm gonna write tricky, several. Tricky. <laughs> wow, I am so unsure on what. I want to say there's about fifteen thousand ranked things. But there's a lot of stuff that didn't make the rankings. Right. 
Uh, yeah, I noticed this because I went and looked at them all, and at the end I can see stuff that was just announced, so I knew it was just added. It was right. interesting. I looked at uh. the the end. Hi, <sighs> this one's tricky. Also, yeah, this is really hard. I feel like I've got no no chance on this one, but that's all right. I would have got this wrong myself. I sure hope my math was correct on this one, but I'm pretty sure I got it right. It okay. depends on how well I do, whether I think your math was correct. <laughs> All right, Z, you're first. I got 82,000. 82,000, what did you and say? You're way over me. I said 24,500. And Jason? I said more than my collection. 30,001. Actually, I forgot I was going to make a slide that said how many games were in Jason's collection, and oh. I said no one knows or cares. <laughs> uh, but the actual answer is 115,378, which gives Z another three points. Man. Sorry, guys. And Jason, Jason gets two. I have manually entered all of these. 115,000. So currently, Jason has four, Mike has five, and Z has six. That's right. Ooh, all What's right, the first Z. game I ever reviewed? That you ever reviewed? Like on on camera, on camera. not on camera. It Just was a written review. A written review. It's a very uh, popular game. I would actually. have said Sellers of Catan. Party game. Oh, a party game. Faces. Telestrations. Nope. Time's, Time's up. up. Oh, all right. So I went on eBay, and because can't find many Times Ups available online anyway. Mm -hmm. So this copy from this seller was the highest one I found. The highest price of Times Up. It's the deluxe 10th anniversary edition. How much is? Is it selling for? Okay. You can buy it now if you want. Okay. Okay. Um, why? What comes in the deluxe edition? The game. I think it came with some expansions. Mm. I think. I think they also, in the 10th anniversary edition, I think they added that fourth round. And I don't know. I didn't have the 10th anniversary edition. Definitely they added good art. <laughs> Anyway, um, when was the 10th anniversary? Well, it, it was a while ago, actually, because, again, this was my first review. I reviewed it in 2002. Wow. So this must be the 2012 edition, because I'm pretty sure it came out around when I reviewed it. Oh, uh, wow. The Internet guesses are quite hefty. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that rare. <laughs> Oh, alrighty. It just oh, you're still drawing. I keep waiting for Z. I no, realize he's over being artistic. Stuff. Mike, what do you got? Thirty nine dollars. Thirty nine dollars. Jason. Seventy five dollars and one cent. Z. Ninety eight bucks. <laughs> Forty-one dollars and ninety-nine cents. Oh, so close. Mike, that is super close. I almost would give you an extra point. Man, but I won't. All right. <laughs> Man. All right. My most watched review as of this point in time, actually, I think it's side, but until a few months ago, it was Sellers? Dominion. Dominion. Mm. Now, Dominion has a new expansion coming out this month, maybe. You know, everything's been delayed right, and stuff, right. right? But not counting that new expansion called Menagerie, how many different kingdom cards are there? These are the, you put out 10 different cards, decks at the mm -hmm. beginning. Whoa. So when you use all the expansions, how many are there? I went to, there's a, are you including There's a Dominion pro, are website. Are you including promos? Uh, yeah, I am. But I'm not including cards that are not, like, I'm not including the pile of curses. I'm not including the pile of weird piles that, you know, like there was one pile that when you buy it transforms into something else. Yes. Not like it. that would change any of y'all's answers. My second question would be, how many combinations are possible? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's the first number times the second number, and yeah. you do that times to 10, 10 right. and then you divide by... Shut. Hang on. Uh, Hang on. By 10 times 9 times 8 times 9 times 6 times 5. Yeah. Uh, it's a big number, but... I hope I remember how many games and expansions. I have them all, I can't remember. Yeah, but have, you haven't opened them all, so you wouldn't know. No, I actually have. <laughs> Dominion, I've opened everything. 
All right. Okay. I don't know why. I, I keep falling keep in this trap of waiting for Z. <laughs> right. He's colored. All right, Jason, what do you got? 261. Ooh, 261. I said 188. Mike? 225. Answer is 334. Wow. Good Whoa. night. So there were more than nine different sets of regular? I don't keep track of this. I went and looked but, on the website. But each one comes with 25. What's it like? No, there's more. Some of them had more. Some had less. Oh, because some of them have those, those cards are like five different cards in one stack. No, that's not it. Not it at all. Alrighty. I think that's wrong. I'm Let's go. Look it up. No, I'm serious. I went. There's a website about I'm going to challenge you off the air to a duel. I'm, I'm going to pull off a glove and slap right. you with it. Next one. So, this is a live video. We've been doing a lot of live videos. Yes. I want to know how many have we done. Live videos. live videos. Okay. Live. Okay. In this, is, this is showing some of the first live ones oh, we ever did. Geez. Melody did our top Come 100, on. and there's that uh, 24 hours gaming marathon that we did. Remember that? Back in ba back in, in the other house? In, in, in your old if house? If there was one video I could redo, it'd be that email I sent out. Perfect. Right on Do you have any idea on this, right? I had to go through and count them. It, it was a lot. Oh. All right. No, no, hang on. I used math. Did you use math? And you know how dangerous that can be. I will say that the vast majority of these videos have been 2019 to 2020. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Because we, I mean, in 2020, we did more videos, I think, than we did 2017 prior. Okay. We just didn't do a lot of live stuff before. Last year was the first year we made a big push to live. Mm. Uh, oh, no, you're tricking us. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really not. There's no trickery here. It's Fine. Just write a number. All right. I think my Z. Too high. Well, I don't think 316. 316. Okay, I, I think I went way too high. Here's what I did. I took 52 weeks in a year. Oh, I multiplied three live shows a week. I got 156. I multiplied that by 10. 1,560. But again, I want to point out we weren't doing a lot I, of I had to, stuff. I have to point right. out one point 1, in, your, uh, in your algorithm. 500 <laughs> and Jason, what would you say? Okay, I sort of did what Mike did, but the difference is I know that you do about 10 live shows a week times 52 weeks. Plus, Are these people watching our channel? Live shows a week. What is going on? All right, what do you got? Okay, Give me a number. Including Q&As, 1,001. You do Q&As, and you've done those for years, and those are live. Yeah, that's one a week. Well, what would you say? Times five years of Q&As? 300. Actually, it's 1,217. So Woo! Jason, Jason gets it again. <clears throat> Man. And then you get It was all those live Q&As. Right? It does, yes. It, it was all those live Q&As that did it. All right, last question, or second last question, actually. <clears throat> all right. So that first, one of the first live things we did was that marathon. You were there, you were there, I was there. You weren't, so you're at a disadvantage. I, I did am. you watch it? I'm sure I did. How many games did we play in that first marathon? And I went through and skimmed the video so I could count wow. them. Wow. Do we have it bonus points if, hours. We, if we can list some of the games? Jason, I remember I'm some. not asking that question. I'm asking how many games did we play in oh, that first marathon? I, oh. 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 But, so why they're writing this down? So the live things that we did... The, all the live videos, the, really the vast majority have been over the last year because we've done about four or five a week, which times 52 is 250 some, but we did a lot more live than people think. And so 10 is actually not incorrect. But before 2018, we were doing at most one a week or yeah, so. Yeah. Maybe two. Yeah, that's I, was I was doing the Q&A and maybe something else. That three a week was, I was just thinking, adjusting for later years. Um... All right. No, no, no. No, you got to write a number down. Five, four, three, Fine. two, one. All right, Mike, what do you got? 17. 17. Jason? 25. 25. 16. Ooh. 16. The answer is 18. Whoa. <laughs> Man. All righty. The only one who wasn't there gets it right. Bonus points now. <clears throat> the bonus question is what Jason had already said. And that is, can you list oh, games geez. that we played? I got no chance. I know, at least, I know a Ooh. bunch of them. I've got no, no chance. No, you can't get that. I need a better marker for this again. Unfortunately. Did, this, did they both? What year What year I'll was this? I'll just give me a pen. Here, I got it with a pen. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll just give you a piece of paper. I got, I got this. What oh, year yeah. was it? 2015. 
got no chance on this. No chance! Yeah, but pick things that you think we would have played live. Yeah. I know you have no chance, but there's not a lot of points anyway. All right. I, I, I know at Some least three. Some of our three. most classic moments came from this first I'm one. Sure. Yes. I know at least three. Games were ruined forever. Oh, what else? <sighs> Hang on. Oh, I didn't realize the number came behind the, yeah. the um, picture I, there. I was changing it back and forth. Oh. Hmm. 18. <laughs> what else did we play? Other than those those ones that I remember. Um, what is that stupid game called? Yeah. Um, here's the, the funny thing is, and I guess maybe it's giving clues out to some degree, but I did not know Z quite as well back then. There are a lot of games on this list that I would not have played with Z <laughs> now. And I was like watching the video thinking, I subjected Z to that game. I feel so bad in retrospect. Mm. <laughs> that was a that was a very strong learning. You know what experience else you subjected us. me to? Yes, I do. Mm hmm Got it. And Man. I'll never forgive you for that. <laughs> I am really struggling here. I thank you for that, I guess. Woo! Alrighty. All right, time's up. If you uh, have, you have, okay, right. I only, I only have three. I have four, but oh, I feel like I might win this. <laughs> Mike, what do you got? I got Time's Up, Cosmic Encounter, and El Grande. Well, two of those are correct. We did not play El Grande. We did play Cosmic Encounter. Darn it. All right, what did, what did you write, Jason? Carnival Zombie. That was the very first game we played. Time's Up. Well, that's... You should just write that as a matter of course, yes. And that's that was when I did my famous Charlie's Angels. No one remembers that. And... and, <laughs> my, and and Stop. also, wait. That's when I did. <laughs> and also, I learned my famous Charlie's <laughs> Angel. Did you really just say that some and goofy thing you did wait. a few years ago on a live stream? And I learned about the song Amazing Grace and what it actually is. Well, about. that's what I remember. The Christmas song. You're going the Christmas song. I learned about Amazing Grace. Omega Protocol Level Seven. Yes. And Jamaica. Jamaica is correct. Oh, but I forgot. I caught me counter hard to get it. It was care. your favorite. <laughs> This is so sad. I put Time's Up, Take yes. It to Ride King of Tokyo, no. that yes. dice chucking thing. Yes. Tumbling that's, Dice? Yeah, tumbling that's dice. it. We did do Tumbling Dice. Done. We it's played Going, giving, Going, Gone. Give it to Jason. We won't play that now. Going, Going, Gone. Level 7 Omega Pro Gold. Lifeboats. Which we is, did oh. play Lifeboats. Tumbling this Dice, Jamaica, is... Coyote. Coyote was actually, of all the games we played, the one we shouldn't have. Because we played at the very end of the night. And we were so tired. And we put them there and we're just staring at each other's heads. <laughs> I remember Trying to do that. math in our head. I, like, I do ah, remember that. Like, bang the dice game. Because Sam oh, was there. No. <laughs> yes. Time's up. Small World. King of Tokyo. Carnival Zombie. Robin Hood. The, that was, this was before, before Sheriff Sheriff Nottingham. Wow. Um, nothing personal. Because, yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Cosmic Encounter. We played Tales of Arabia Nights, which you hate. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> that. I forgot that. Resistance. We yeah. did play. That's that. where we learned a little yeah. bit about Jason. Shadows over Camelot, where Z was the oh, traitor. Oh, that was that's one that. of the moments I remember from that thing. It's a that. classic <laughs> moment of me being a traitor. Famous, uh, famous, famous moment, moment of me being <laughs> and a traitor. Cloud yeah. nine. All right, that's a bonus point for Jason. And what game? Cloud nine. Cloud nine. Cloud nine. Jason, Jason would you like one nine. or two bonus points? Um, two of course. But if you tie the winner, then it goes to the third place. Two still. All right. Jason has 14, Z has 8, and Mike has 15. Ooh. I should have said 1, 2, or 3. Then you would have you would have taken 3, and I would have given the game to Z. Come on, yeah. Ken. <laughs> Ask him again. <laughs> All righty, folks. Thanks for jumping on. Let's go to our contributors. A re-theme is when a publisher or a designer takes an old game and puts a new kind of coat of paint on it. So for instance, Kokoro, Avenue of the Kodama, was originally published in, I believe, Europe as just called Avenue. It had people in it and a town. And instead, they replaced it with Potato Men and Dr. Seuss Trees. But the mechanics... The design is all the same, it's just kind of a new coat of paint, new skin on the game.
Re-implementation is when a designer takes a game or a publisher takes a game and kind of puts a twist on it for a new kind of version of the game. Lost Cities, the card game, uh, could be re-implemented by Lost Cities, the board game, or Keltus. They took the basic uh, design premise of Lost Cities, twisted it a little bit, updated it a little bit to fit into a board game version. Spiritual successor is a really pretentious term to just kind of say that you're going to make a game based off of one of your older games, sort of. They just kind of feel similar, kind of like how Altiplano feels like Orleans, but they're different games, but they're by the same designer and they play similarly. I would ignore that term. It doesn't really mean too much. It's really, yeah, it doesn't do much. Hi, everybody. Hello, we are Ryan and Bethany. From Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. All right, well, today we're going to be talking about Subatomic. This is an atom building game. Uh, Subatomic is published by Genius Games, and you are literally doing that. You're building things up to try and build elements. This is a deck builder, so you start with these really, really small cards in your hand called, not the cards themselves aren't small, but they represent <laughs> up quarks and down quarks and these <laughs> photon gamma rays, these really bitty microscopic parts of the, essentially the building blocks of the universe. You build them into protons and electrons and ultimately into elements. Um, so yeah, it's the science in it is really fun. It's really interesting. Um, and it's a good refresher for all of us who haven't been studying physics and chemistry for the past little while <laughs> it is a very basic deck builder there's not a lot of um fluff in it but it really doesn't need it it's a pretty fun game um even with it being basic like that i enjoyed it i really liked it and let's just say while i was in high school i may or may not have had a teacher that um encouraged cheating in his class because he said it would be better to send down a bunch of a's to the office and a bunch of f's um and i would have loved to have something like this at the time so i could have learned these concepts that he was trying to not teach us <laughs> so when our daughters get to be the age where this becomes relevant to them we will for sure be teaching them um subatomic um so yeah we really enjoyed this one it was a lot of fun if you want to check out our full review you can go to our youtube page we are ryan and bethany board game reviews and we are on facebook as well all right well this is ryan i'm bethany encouraging you to have a happy healthy breakfast and to expand your minds <laughs> with science. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Science! <laughs> This is Roy Candy, and this is Immersed, where I take a look at different game components that you can add to your game, different upgrades, and see how they can make your game more immersive. Today, I'm going to be looking at a legendary playmat from Upper Deck. Let's take a look. So here we have the old playmat from Legendary Villains, which has the things backwards. So most of the sets don't really use this one. So get this out of my face. All right, so what we're gonna have here is the new play mats they have here. And this has extra space for a lot of the new things that came out. And I just really enjoy the artwork on this one. I think the artwork is crazy the way that it looks with all the different guys from the mostly Marvel Cinematic Universe stuff facing off against Thanos, but I just think the artwork on this is great. Um, and then, of course, you have all your spots for your, your like villain deck and your hero deck and everything like that. You can have your scheme out there and, of course, your mastermind. And you can put your – has spaces for your strikes and sidekicks and officers and all the different stuff that's been added to the game now. Um, so it has extra things like that. And, of course, as your different characters come out, you'll be able to set them up across the board here. And I just feel like the way that this um, adds that feel, because playing on a play mat, of course, with any deck building game, it's easier to pick up if you're on a neoprene mat. And it just looks good as things are going across the board like so. Cool. Hopefully that looks good. Hopefully my shoulder wasn't too much in the way. But um, but yeah, so that is the play mat for Legendary there. I just enjoy the way this looks and the way it has spaces for all of the new stuff that they've added to the game. What's up, everyone? My name is Melissa McCack, and I'm joined here with my brother, Justin McCack. What's up, everybody? This is Smashing Buttons and Slamming Cards, where I talk about a video game I love, and I connect it to a board game I love. And this week... I'm going to have Justin actually talk about a video game. All right, so I'm going to be talking about 
F1 2019. It is the official Formula One video game. So it's a racing game where you go into a Formula One car on any team and you're trying to do your best in the race. And each team though has a different objective on where they want to end up. So if your team wants you to get seventh or better, you decide that seventh or better to get more resource points. And yeah, you don't have to win the race to be doing well in the game. So I want to connect that to Downforce. Downforce is an interesting game where there's a race going on, but you're auctioning off for cars that you want based on the cards that you have in your hand, and then you're betting on each other's card uh, or cars. Car. So that's why I'm connecting it really to uh, F1 because you don't have to have your car win the race. As long as you're betting on the car that is winning the race, yeah. you have a strong possibility of winning because it's the one who has the most money right. at the end of the game exactly. that wins the game. Uh, Downforce, I think Justin likes a little bit better yeah. than I do. Own all the expansions. <laughs> yes, and uh, I do like the game, though, a lot. It's fantastic. Even though he thinks I kind of hate it, but I don't. He's okay on it. I like it. I love it, actually. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. You could check out our podcast called Room 51. Yes. I'll catch you next time. It's wrong with you. The songs have gotten cooler. You like it? The last I figured that was a Jason, uh, a hit for Jason. All right, guys. It's a famous <laughs> moment from the. <laughs> that was, that, remember that famous moment where I introduced Ten for Ten by singing some garbage. This will be classic in about 12 years. Um, but, okay, this is our 50th episode, and so today you guys are going to be ranking games from the 50s. The 1850s. No, I'm kidding. The you 1950s. Found, you got one game. <laughs> one game. Here we go, guys. Here are the games. Careers. Oh, I've right. heard of it. Like it. Yahtzee. I've heard ah. of it. 3D Tic-Tac-Toe. Oh, I actually like that. No. Risk. Memory. Oh, na, 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 na. Now I'm having a dream of you dressed like a Don't cat. Don't spill the beans. Oh, I played that. My brother stuck beans up his nose from that and had to go to the doctor and have him removed. Really? Millborn. <laughs> Millborn, the racing game. Diplomacy. Diplomacy, yeah. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Concentration. Ooh. Racco. So again, these are all, you are trying to grab the ones that have the highest ranking on Board Game Geek. You will each get five. When it is your turn, you will take one that is available, meaning nothing on top of it, and either keep it or give it to your opponent. As soon as someone hits five, the other player gets the rest, so that you each have five. Then you will rank them from the one you think has the highest rating to the one you think has the lowest rating. You will then reveal them. You're gonna get the total points on the backs of the cards, plus five bonus points if your ranking was indeed correct. If not, no penalty. You just score the points on the cards. Got it. Tom is straight up No, I, I wrote what I think number 10 and what number 1 is. We'll see if I'm right at the end. Right, I'm just, you got I think I know 10 and 1. The rest I don't know. Uh, I All right, I fellas, we are going to... Uh, let, let him go first. He's a guest. Okay. Well, then it's easy. I'm taking the diplomacy. What I meant was we should roll to see who goes first. <laughs> You're a moron. <laughs> and should have let me make it random. Well, Tom said, let me go first. I'll take diplomacy. Since Jason is taking stuff, I think I'm going to give him Millborns also. If you have diplomacy, that's two cards. Well, that's fine. I could also take risk. I'm not good at this game, Z. <laughs> you might be. In fact, let me this, start ranking mine right now. This might right be now. the worst you've ever done at this game. You really need to look at what you're about to unveil. I, I know it. I'm taking Racco. Here, you could have concentration too. Well, then you're getting memory. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give it. I'm going to take, take Yahtzee with that. Which means I get the other three. Don't Stop picking it. them up. Don't you're showing show numbers. Uh, All right. Now, guys, go ahead and rank them. Highest, you think, the, no the highest one to lowest. Oh, boy. 
I'll, I'll, I'll oh. help him out here. Okay. Right. I will rank right. mine here. These I will are move my mine rankings. out to the middle. Let's see. I Hang think on. careers, racco, concentration, 3D tic tac toe, and then don't spill the beans. Oh. Even though don't spill the beans is a fantastic game. Shall we do uh, Jason's first? Diplomacy. But you already put yours in order? Yeah, of course. You're fast. Diplomacy all the way down to memory. <laughs> well, so I'm, I'm just saying now, I think Jason got 10 and 1. Okay. I think, I think we'll so see. too. Let's find out, all right? So actually, we'll do 1 and 1. How about all right, that? Here we go. So diplomacy indeed is number 10. I think it wasn't even close, right? Like, it's by far the highest. There's about 5,000 difference to the next <laughs> yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Please tell me I got number diplomacy 9. Diplomacy is 580 right now, the ranking on that. And careers yeah! is 9. Careers! Which is 5,524. It's undervalued. After now, that. Which game's better? Careers. We're looking at, It's friendlier. No, uh, it's after that, we're not. looking at the next one here. Risk. It's five. You Why? forgot Board Game Geek has a hatred for risk. Board, risk is 18,000 and change. I'm going to say Yahtzee's higher than risk. And Racco <laughs> would be the next one at 6,900 I hate Racco. Now, Racco is a very How good game. How is Racco more popular than risk? Okay, next risk. up, we're looking at Yahtzee is three. Ooh, Yahtzee is 18,500 and change. Yahtzee is better than people give it credit for. And then Concentration would be six. Tom, you're doing really well so far. You okay. might actually pull this off. I'm feeling okay. You're feeling okay? I hope I get two and one. Milbo. That's true. I think Milborn might be two. Is seven. What? Seven. That's both good for you and bad. It's in the 7,000 range. And then Tom, four for tic-tac-toe. So these are the two and the one. So that means Tom... You got worse cards, generally speaking. Not really, but you do have a five-point bonus. Oh. And Jason over here has 10, 26. Tom has 10, 27, 29. 28, 29, uh, 34. Woo! Which one was one you gave me? You gave me concentration, didn't you? Yeah. Six points, baby! Concentration is uh, great stuff, man. Yeah, so the worst is by, is memory, and it's in the uh, eighteen thousand range. Actually, the bottom five from risk on, they're all eighteen thousand and something. Well, people on board game geek definitely have a general. It's crazy. Bias like the old difference games. between but risk. Risk is a good game. The difference between risk and three D tic tac toe is only like three hundred spots. Have you played 3D Tic Tac? I have. It's 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 okay. I think it's the best game on this list. Is what I was attempting no, to say. No, that's careers. Careers that, no, is the best. No, game. that's Racco. That's definitely Racco. You like Racco? Racco is amazing. I cannot tell Lee. how much. Who cares? Diplomacy is the only game in one of our top tens, top one hundreds of all time. Well, there was a classic moment, like a famous <laughs> moment, in which I played Racco against <laughs> the computer. We have a few more contributors. Let's jump to them. As I. Good morning, everybody. My name is Aaron from the Board Game Brothers. Welcome to another Mystery Components segment, where I show you a picture of a game piece. It's up to you to try to guess what game that piece comes from. So without further ado, let's put on our thinking caps, because here is this week's picture. OK, time's up and thinking caps off. And the answer to this week's question is Smash Up. Smash Up is an area control take that card game where players choose two factions, each with their own deck of cards, and smash them together to form their own uniquely themed deck of cards. Each faction has two types of cards, minions, which have a power value on them to represent their strength, and actions, which allows the players to perform various effects and abilities to help them win. On their turn, players are allowed to only play one minion card and one action card in any order, unless the card effect allows them to play more. Players will be fighting over bases, which are cards that award players points depending on who has the most power there represented by minions and cards under their control. When a base ever reaches or exceeds its breaking point, which is calculated by adding up the power of all players' cards played there, then at the end of the player's turn, they'll receive points depending on if they had the most, second most, or third most total power at that base. Players take turns playing cards and breaking bases until someone wins by reaching 15 points. 
with over 70 factions including pirates, ninjas, dragons, penguins, wizards, werewolves, and superheroes, just to name a few, Smash Up is a game that will make you want to try all the crazy combinations that you can smash together. And that's this week's game. Congratulations to everybody who got it right, and for everybody else, there's always next week. But until then, hope you all have a happy breakfast and a happy St. Patrick's Day. Hey everybody, it's Kiki from Girls Game Show. How are you doing? How are you surviving this fine quarantine that we're all in? I hope you're doing good. I'm really happy to be back. I figured that maybe we might need some tranquil game ideas, some something to like take the edge off perhaps, and something that you can play online also. So all of the games I'm about to tell you about are available on Tabletopia, that's right. I think all of them are available for free too, at least in a hot seat um, spot. So without further ado, here are three games that you can play in the comfort of your own home that will hopefully bring you inner peace. The first one is Chai by Dan and Connie Kazmaier. It's a lovely little game. I tried to be cutthroat the last time I played it and it just didn't work. So you are gathering materials from the market and from the pantry to try and make the perfect cup of tea for your customers. Whoever has the most happiest customers in the end will win the game. And it's just so dang lovely, highly recommend. The next game I want to tell you about is Ducks in Tow by Stephanie Kwok. Oh my goodness, this game. You are feeding ducks in the pond with their favorite food to try and get them from one area of the park to their favorite area of the park so that you can take a picture with them. I mean, if there is not a more charming theme for a pick up and deliver game, then I don't know even what it is. It's just, it's just really sweet and cute. So recommend that one as well. Finally, if you're like me and maybe you haven't played the hottest game of 2019 yet, then here is your chance even if you don't own it. That's right, Wingspan by Elizabeth Hargrave is available on Tabletopia. You could get in on that action. In fact, I think I probably should. Probably, don't you think? Friends, that was my list of games you could play online right now that will make you feel all peaceful and lovely and warm inside. If you have others to add that are on Tabletop Simulator or Tabletopia, then let me know in the comments below what your favorite online games are. It is so good to be back. If you want to check out more of our content, look at our website, Girls Game Shelf, or on YouTube. You'll see us there too. I hope you all are staying safe. See you next time. Happy breakfast everyone, this week I'm going to talk to you about Battlesheep. Now Battlesheep may look like a children's game, but it's very, very mean and worked really well for a lunchtime game. So everyone starts with four field tiles, uh, they're all the same shape which is slightly unfortunate, and you build out this pasture that's made up of hexagons that you're going to try and claim. Everyone then takes a stack of 16 sheep of one colour and puts it somewhere on the outside boundary. On your turn, you do something that's very simple. You take as much of that stack, leaving at least one behind of your sheep, and you move it as far as you can in one line to a different hexagon. You can't jump your own sheep. You can't jump other people's sheep. You can't jump over a boundary. You cannot stop part way, you very simply take some of your sheep tokens, sort of poker chip like tokens, and move them as far as you can. The aim is to just cover the board with as many of your sheep as possible and stop them sort of getting a pile getting stuck and blocked in. You are just as much trying to spread out as stop other people. It's not necessarily a game to play with a, a loved one, if uh, you uh, want her to be talking at the end of the night, but against some friends, you can play this for 10, 15 minutes, even half an hour, and really enjoy it, which makes it great for lunch because you can just play a little bit, be a bit mean, sort of everyone's having a bit of a laugh uh, and sort of gasping when they've missed something obvious. Anyway, that's Battle Sheep, and I'm Oliver East signing out. Hey everybody, that's it for another episode of Board Game Breakfast. Before we run off here, a couple things. First of all, 
we want to announce that this game is broken is joining the Dice Tower Network. You may not have heard this game is broken before. It is unlike any other board game podcast out there. I think I'm safe to say that. That is correct. It's a comedy podcast uh, in which uh, you, uh, if you just want to be entertained, listen to some silly questions, some silly answers, that's where you want to be. Not an informational one. But certainly entertaining. They're, and they're, it's it's a, got a great cast of characters. They're, they're super amazing, and I love their game shows. They're, they really do a good job. It is a lot of fun. It's run by people that you've seen here on Board Game Breakfast. Dave Lusa, Matthew Jude. Um, put it all together along with the brothers Murph, who should do a segment for Board Game Breakfast once in a while. Um, but they also have their own Twitch stream. So... One thing, to, uh, one caveat, just realize that while the Dice Tower video channel itself is very family friendly, now uh, this one leans much more heavily in the PG-13 territory, so keep that in mind, but I think you'd still really enjoy it. Um, finally, a last announcement for today. We're, this is not the last live thing today. we got three more live things coming up. At 1 o'clock, we have the top 10 essential games of all time that you should have and own. Yeah. At 4 o'clock, Manny and Suzanne are doing Aptastic, where they show you again a little bit how to play on the internet, which a lot of people are wanting to do right now. And then at 9 o'clock, we have Dice Tower Chat with special guest host. We'll see you then. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Jason Levine, the gaming machine. See you next time.